I'm a security analyst with OmniSoc. Um, I, I, I joined the team in June, so I'm still learning my way. Um, but one uh, project that I'm excited to work on, uh, I'll be sharing a little bit with you today. Um, and a little bit about my background. Uh, I have a little over 20 years uh, in various IT roles at Indiana University. Uh, early in my career, I really gravitated towards researchers using computing in interesting ways um, to solve problems. So um, a lot of the campus enterprise uh, services weren't meeting the needs of those researchers. So that allowed for me to build relationships uh, with the researcher, find their nuanced workflows, and then craft some services around their particular operations and their mission. Um, so the United States Academic Research Fleet, um, something I didn't know existed until five months ago, um, but a project that I'm super excited to work on. Um, ARF consists of 17 research vessels uh, that operate uh, some ROVs, um, some submersibles, um, we consider this an NSF major facility, the collective um, of the research vessels. Um, and it's a unique environment. Uh, obviously, it's distributed. Most of their ins institutions, there's nearly you know, 17 institutions um, operating uh, in the fleet. Each one of those institutions have various levels of campus support and on-ship resources. So today, uh, in this presentation, we're going to talk about uh, the International Maritime Organization regulation, uh, which essentially um, has required that the operation of the ship must take into consideration cyber risk along with their other uh, risk factors in the safe operation of the vessel. Um, and also, OmniSoc has built um, a cyber risk management program as a compliance solution uh, to achieving this IMO. Uh, regulation. Uh, to ease the burden in navigating international maritime organization cyber risk management requirements, uh, the ARF security team and uh, one of our colleagues here, Will Drake, was instrumental in this process. Thank you, Will. Um, to develop a cyber risk management program that each institution in the fleet can adopt. Um, the IMO uh, guidance doesn't really give clear uh, guidance into how to achieve this, um, but they did uh, provide some references uh, that Will and, and his team were able to uh, use to build this program. Um, moving back, uh, IMO through a series of amendments to the International Safety Management Code uh, requires ship owners and operators to incorporate cyber risk management practices into existing management processes. The purpose of the IMS code is to provide the international standard for safe management and operation of ships and also protection of the environment. So specifically, there was uh, two amendments uh, that, that uh, paved the path for this uh, requirement. And that's MSC 42898, the Maritime Cyber Risk Management and Safety Management Systems. Little did I know that uh, a vessel has a safety management system. I'm glad that, to hear that they do have a safety management system, but things that I didn't know that existed. Uh, another um, am amendment to the IMS code was MSC FAL 1 CERC 3, the Guidelines on Maritime Cyber Risk Management. So these are, uh, this isn't as heavy of a document, but there's some key takeaways um, that we found uh, in this process. And uh, for the Maritime Cyber Risk Management and Safety Management Systems, it sets the requirement for cyber risk management to be incorporated into a ship's safety management system, their SMS. It also sets a deadline um, to addressing cyber risks no later than the first uh, doc uh, document of compliance after January 1st, 2001. And it, this particular document also points to another resource uh, for guidance on how to establish maritime cyber risk management program. Uh, so the second uh, reference document uh, defines cyber risk management 
uh, into terms that we're all familiar with. Uh, so that was helpful. It also reinforces that the goal is to support the safe operation of the vessel and protection of the environment. And, uh, and it, it also defines an accepted approach to receiving or achieving cyber risk management. Assessing the current state against the desired state, identifying gaps, performing a risk assessment, and then closing those uh, gaps and making improvements. And then rinse and repeat, right? Uh, we're never done. Um, there's also uh, some additional uh, guidance documents. Uh, GC SOS, the guidelines for cybersecurity onboard ships, ISO IEC, and the NIST cybersecurity framework. The guidelines for cybersecurity onboard ships. Uh, this is directly applicable to the maritime or maritime environment without any additional tailoring. Uh, it is also recognized by IMO and the U.S. Coast Guard. In our, our case of the academic research fleet, um, that falls to the flag nations uh, for their inspections, which uh, in our case goes to the Coast Guard. And it also explicitly mentions using CIS controls for technical uh, implementations and uh, control baseline. Uh, GCSOS describes a cyclical approach. Uh, again, uh, things that we're familiar with in the SEC world, uh, identifying threats, identifying vulnerabilities, uh, accessing risk exposure, developing protection and detection measures, establishing response plans, and responding to and recovering from security incidents. Uh, GCSOS also has uh, Annex 2 that contains uh, condensed program requirements. Uh, there's 11 controls split across uh, functional elements of the NIST cybersecurity framework. Most of these controls have sub sub controls uh, and many other items within. Um, and I also uh, put a quote here. Uh, the guidance of this annex is designed to provide the minimum measures that all companies should consider implementing so as to address cyber risk management in an approved uh, safety management system. So the ARF security team's approach, uh, in this case, we decided to go uh, and adopt the GCSOS Annex 2 control baseline, um, document the cyber risk management program and uh, control implementation and cyber risk management plan which acts as an addendum to their safety management system. While documenting control implementations, again, uh, identifying uh, and documenting uh, security gaps, and then using those gaps uh, to uh, create a plan of action uh, to get those, uh, those gaps addressed. Uh, just like it, with anything, it takes uh, some time, so prioritizing some of those gaps um, to see what we could make progress on uh, but also keeping tabs of those uh, of those gaps uh, so that we can close them as, as soon as possible. Uh, updating the CRMP as systems and control implementations change. And then again, we repeat this process. Uh, the easiest way is to focus on what's changed and at least conduct uh, a review once a year. This is an example, um, one of many examples. Um, but I wanted to highlight, um, it, it takes quite a few people. Uh, compliance isn't just an IT problem. Uh, compliance is an organizational goal. Um, so not just the, the, the techs on board ships, um, but maybe the captain, um, the, the home institution, everybody plays a part um, in, in this process. Uh, this is a direct, uh, example out of uh, our risk management program uh, template. Uh, this is just an example. Each institution is a little unique, so they may not have some of these positions or organizationally they may uh, leverage uh, certain positions and uh, make them responsible for different aspects of, of compliance. Another example, um, 
is pretty much um, just states that uh, the safety management system needs to have uh, some language uh, incorporated to addressing cyber risk management into their risk management process. Um, Also in our template, uh, we have an implementation status. Uh, again, uh, it's not uh, you know, a checklist. Um, this is a cyclical process, um, but as we go through and make our assessment, we need to know where we're at and we need to know where we want to be. Um, so various levels of implementation, um, which we will talk about here in a moment. Uh, and also, uh, Will was kind enough uh, for each one of these controls um, to add an interpretation uh, into our template, um, providing some guidance on what does uh, the terminology actually mean, distill that down into uh, actionable items. We also uh, in our template, also leverage um, references to the CIS control set um, that applies to that particular control. Uh, once we identify our gaps, well, we want to make a, a plan to address those gaps. Um, so a plan of actions and milestones. Uh, we also provide a template for that. Uh, it details uh, the current and de uh, desired state. Uh, and allows for us to keep track of that and set uh, some timelines uh, for making improvements. This is uh, another example of that uh, plan of actions and milestone uh, geared uh, directly to my prior example of developing an incident module into the SMS. Uh, some drop downs to help us keep track um, the responsible group and uh, when we would like to have these uh, items addressed. Uh, vessel inspections, uh, from what I've heard from the fleet, um, the, this is a relatively new process for the ship auditors to come on board. Uh, ship operators have been looking at operational technologies. They've been looking at uh, inter, uh, industrial control systems on board ships, navigation, GPS. Uh, cyber isn't really, uh, or IT for that matter, really isn't in their wheelhouse. Um, so there's been some auditors that has uh, kind of glossed over, said, hey, are you uh, taking into, into consideration cyber risk? Um, some of them have taken a little bit deeper dive, but uh, in the coming year, in the coming years, we expect for these, uh, these inspections to be a little bit more thorough over time. Um, and really drive down into uh, more detail uh, of the risk management system. Again, um, vessels in the fleet, uh, they uh, vary in age. So we have some uh, vessels in the fleet that have all analog controls. Um, some of the new ships that are coming online have uh, network integrated everything. Um, so each, uh, each institution in each vessel does have a unique environment uh, that needs to be accounted for. Um, during the inspections, there could be a, a non-conformity finding. Um, we're not too concerned about the non-conformity findings. Uh, we want to make sure that we address those, but a major non-conformity could result in the ship being docked. And if the ship is docked, they're not out at sea and they're not doing research. So that's our, our biggest fear um, is that because of uh, a control implementation uh, and a risk assessment, we want to make sure that the vessels are fully operating, they're out at sea, they're conducting research, uh, because every moment that they're not, um, they're losing that opportunity to, to gain that information. And um, leading to that, um, I saw a slide earlier this year from our friends at the Center for Applied Cybersecurity Research uh, and the question was posed, what is the biggest risk to research? And we heard a lot of uh, different takes from a lot of different people. Oh, it's the end users. Oh, it's, uh, you know, compliance frameworks. Um, and, and no, um, the, the biggest risk to research is that the research is hindered or stops. Uh, so as we approach uh, risk management and as we approach uh, creating solutions 
to enable research to, to continue. Uh, we need to make sure that compliance uh, is incorporated into that, but is not uh, directly hindering uh, the research. So a little bit about the ARF security team. Um, we provide uh, several different services uh, to the fleet. Uh, it is an opt-in service. Um, we do have red phone and incident response uh, services. Uh, we will assist with uh, control implementations and provide some guidance. And we'll assist with performing risk assessments, uh, assess the infrastructure security, or I'm sorry, um, also providing IT uh, infrastructure security event log monitoring. Uh, we have some interesting projects underway right now um, with the FortiGate firewall uh, project, uh, again, an opt-in for uh, vessels in the ship uh, to standardize some of their networking um, and also to uh, ship some of these logs uh, back to us at OmniSoc uh, for uh, inspection and alerting. Uh, we also provide vulnerability management uh, uh, security policy templates and we also uh, have about i think we have about four or five honey pots now deployed on ships uh, that we actively monitor uh, to see if there's any misconfigured devices or any malicious activity occurring on ship on their networks it's been a really interesting project to work on and uh other things that we can help the fleet with uh, is filling out uh, this CRMP. Again, uh, it's a program. Uh, it's not particularly a plan or a policy. Uh, it's not a checklist. Uh, it's an all-encompassing program. Uh, we could provide guidance in assisting in implementing security controls and performing risk assessments and giving uh, recommendations along the way and uh, also preparing for audit. Again, we're still not sure really what audit fully looks like, um, but those in the fleet that's had recent audits uh, have reported various levels uh, of depth that the auditor has gotten into. And with that, I thank you. What are the largest changes between um, vessel-based and land-based implementations of the OmniSoc services? What what needs to change? Uh, sure, sure. Um, a, a big hurdle is uh, connectivity from vessel to shore. Um, and again, across the fleet, we have several different varieties of how we uh, ingest data from, from ship. Um, some of the connections are, are very you know, low ba bandwidth, high latency. Uh, and so we don't want to clog that pipe with uh, pulling event logs through. We want the science to, to happen first um, in other areas. Uh, and, and we're actually exploring uh, Starlink offerings as well, which is looking promising, but has its own challenges as well. Uh, so uh, we're looking to, hopefully with the increased bandwidth that, that Starlink will provide, uh, looking at finding out if it's feasible to, to pull logs directly from ship. Um, in other cases, uh, the ship tunnels back to their home campus and we can collect uh, information there. Thank you for the nice presentation. I was wondering in terms of threat actors, who is giving you the most headaches? Um, I'm not entirely sure quite yet. Um, let's see. John, do you have any? Uh... They, they said the ships themselves, for those of you in remote attendance. All right, well, thank you very much, Michael. Thank you.